Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's faculty prime time. Tonight, we're joined by Erin Schmidt, who teaches the user experience seminar here at SLIS. Erin is here to tell us about, about his class, his current projects, and why user experience design is so important for libraries. Welcome, Erin, and thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Sounds right. OK. Um, and I will tell you a little, I was going to dive in more about what I do in the, this class I have been teaching for the Swiss, um, but let's just say that we cover the types of topics that I'm going to be talking about in brief today, and um, if you have any questions um, about what we do in the class, you can let me know. Um, so I am a librarian, and I do UX work for libraries, and I have worked in many different roles in libraries, and I love libraries, and I want to make them better, and I think user experience is a great way to do this. So um, why? Um, and for, see, there's a few of you that I know that are taking the class, and sorry about the repetition, but here it goes. So um, I think user experience design is a, an unparalleled framework to improve libraries, and one way that libraries um, can be improved one area that libraries need some improvement in is interaction design. And let me talk a little bit about interaction design in libraries and why this is important. <clears throat> All the different touch points, and I'll talk a little bit more about touch points in, in the um, upcoming minutes, upcoming slides. All these different ways that we communicate with our patrons, all the way, all the different ways that library members interact with libraries really do impact our, um, people, how people perceive libraries. And um, whether it's crummy signage, or the weird language we use in libraries, luckily that's changed recently. Um, our physical buildings, that sometimes leave some things to be desired. Um, our websites, and, and here's a really funny combination, this library. Not only is our website a little bit dated looking and actually not very well organized, they have a section on their site dedicated to library terminology. Um, my take on the situation, why not just use language that everyone can understand rather than trying to educate them about the language you're using. Um, makes sense to me. So our websites, um, the, the tools we um, expose our patrons to, our catalogs and databases, they also are a point of interaction design and quite difficult to use. And my take, let's make this stuff easy to use. Um, this is not the full definition of user experience, but usability is one important part of uh, creating a good user experience. And this stuff really dawned on me when I was working a reference desk in a um, library, suburban Chicago library. Um, I was a newly minted librarian, really keen, loved working the reference desk. Um, it was a great thing. And one day I realized, what, what's going on here? I reach into a drawer and I hand this stapler to a patron probably like 10 times a day. This is not good for me. This is not good for, for people. They have to ask me. I have to, you know, like um, go into this drawer. Why not just put the stapler out? And it was this combined with my um, beginning of getting interested in the web really clued me in, um, into this whole world of usability, making things easy to use. And um, yeah, that's how I got started in all of this. So um, staplers. So interaction design might seem small scale, and it is in a certain sense um, a little bit easier to fix than larger scale issues that libraries are facing. And user experience has something to say not only about interaction design but also about the larger purpose of libraries. <coughs> so um, my background is. Um, public libraries, I'm a public librarian, and um, this next little bit certainly focuses on public libraries, but I do think it is somewhat applicable to our whole discipline. Um, we're about access to information, largely, um, whether it's books, whether it's databases that have all sorts of crazy names that people don't know what they mean. Um, we are largely, libraries largely exist to uh, provide access. and this was an important um, thing for libraries to solve for a long time, and this is a really great way libraries added value to their communities. Um, this is an important problem. And uh, I think somewhat the issue of access is being solved by institutions other than libraries. And access to information 
um, is not a solid foundation uh, for, well, I mean, like I said, a great problem for libraries to, libraries to solve, but I don't think it's a solid foundation for us to build our future on. Um, and, and it's true that libraries do do other things besides provide access. Story times are important, programming is important, and I think we should build upon those things in libraries. Um, but even though we do these things, surveys say that public libraries equal books. No matter how many times um, people get polled, they say books, books, books. And we know that books are changing, and I'm not saying that this isn't a total the sky is falling, ebooks are ruining libraries um, type scenario, but I'm just saying that things are changing and um, publishing worlds and upheaval. People are accessing information in all sorts of different ways, and this is not a solid foundation for libraries to be on. Um, people notice that libraries are difficult to use, especially our digital resources. So here's a web comic that someone wrote, Step 19, give up on stupid library. This is, this is not the kind of user experience that we want to be providing to people. Even if we could um, do a really good job with our uh, access to information and make something as good as Netflix, say, um, or if we, if we could turn into this, which would actually look more like this, um, we would still be making copies of um, other products and services. And I think this puts us at a natural disadvantage if we um, define ourselves in this way by what we're not. And I hear a hands up. Um, oh, maybe it's just a thumbs up. Uh, chime in anyone if you want to um, say anything. So, yes, why are we going to let our competition define us in this way by concentrating on, on um, ebooks and concentrating on providing, I guess, popular materials in this way? Um, no, I'm, I'm not against popular, popular materials in libraries. I think everything belongs in a library. That's fine. Um, but I think there's some more value-added services that libraries can provide to differentiate what we do from other organizations uh, besides just provide um, streaming for, I don't know, Iron Man 3 or whatever. Um, so we have to compete against these folks. Uh, they're pretty major players. Their budgets are a little bit bigger than ours. And um, that puts us in a weird position. It also Still, even if we could do an outstanding job with this, with these electronic resources, it would still put us in what Joan Fry Williams calls the grocery store model of librarianship. I like to call it the content mausoleum model of librarianship, where someone enters the library, takes something home, and uses it. This is a very transactional approach to libraries. And while it's important that people have access to information and that's a value, um, I think libraries can do better and we can aim higher than just being a place to go grab content and leave. And it is this that makes me super uh, aggravated when I see libraries experimenting with red box style kiosks. Uh, I just read an article recently and saying, hey, look at our new library. Um, here, here, here it is on the corner. That to me is insanity because where are the librarians and where are the people? Um, it is people and librarians that add the value to libraries. And if we define ourselves as a place just to grab a DVD, that sucks. <clears throat> Pardon my uh, vulgarity. Anyway, um, places like Borders, places like Blockbuster are shuttering. Um, so places that have been traditional content repositories are in trouble. Um, this is not good for libraries, right? This is how most librarians see circulation statistics. If they're rising, that's good. If they're flatlining or falling, that's bad. And if we define ourselves by our circulation statistics, this is not a sustainable way for libraries to operate. Um, we just can't keep circulating more and more. So there's been a lot of talk about library innovation in the past years with the revolution of the web. Um, but I think it's a bit misguided. I think <clears throat> innovation in the library current innovation in libraries currently this is the library world reacting to larger trends in technology and attempting to incorporate that into library services. So what does this mean? This means a new social network pops up. Libraries invest in that. They play around with it. Maybe they have a link on their homepage. Uh, is that innovation? No, it is not. 
That is playing around with technology and tools available. That's totally legitimate. That's totally good. But our innovation cycle and the process needs to go much, much deeper than that. And we are focused on people's on, on tools. And we're focused on what people are doing on the web when we, um, and what tools they're using when we really need to be focused on the motivation and what is behind this stuff. And when we dig deeper and look at people's lives and do some user research, which I'll talk about briefly, um, we can get at some deeper causes and really impact people's lives. So I haven't even talked about what user experience is yet. I've rambled a lot. Um, so what is user experience? Well, there are a lot of different definitions, but I just want to say um, user experience was born from the software development and web world, but user experience is not just for tech technology, it's not just for software, it's certainly not just technological fixes to bring technology on a problem. And user experience is not just customer service. When I'm, I work with librarians about and, and tell them about user experience and ask them to relay a good user experience that they've had recently, nine times out of ten, they give me a customer service story. And that's fine. Um, user, uh, customer service is one important part of user experience. Humans are social creatures. We respond strongly to human interaction. But uh, a holistic user experience combines many different touch points. So it's customer service. It's facilities. It's the actual service provided. It can even be the signage. It can be the smells. Uh, it can be the parking lot. It can be all these different aspects of using a product or service or library. This adds up to the overall user experience. So here are a bunch of library touch points. Here are ways that, here are things that libraries design, unintentionally or not, uh, to help people. And this is um, not, a, not an exhaustive list, list, but a bunch of different things. And in all this user experience stuff, we need to realize that we're not designing these things for ourselves. We're designing them for our patrons and our members, and um, we should probably design them a little bit differently. Another way to think about this is closing this gap between how we understand libraries and how users understand libraries and use this to create products and services that are useful, usable, and desirable. And this is sort of a holy trinity in user experience work. User experience would um, uh, tells us that we can't shout loud enough to convince people to use the library. People are busy. Um, people have lives outside of libraries, believe it or not. And no amount of pure marketing is going to convince people to use libraries. Now, marketing and PR certainly are necessary to let people know what's up. But if that's not backed up by real meaningful services, it's going to do no good. So instead, user experience tells us to listen rather than shout. Um, and this is a much more empathetic um, view of humanity. Um, this view of humanity says people are sheep, and if you just herd them in a certain direction, they'll behave. This says, hey, let's find out what problems people are having. Let's solve problems for them. And the best article I know about library advocacy, and it's also an article about library user experience, even though she doesn't use the terms, is called What's a Library Worth? by Eleanor Joe Rogers. And in this article, um, the author talks about libraries existing in an ecosystem. And libraries, she says, libraries should not act for the good of libraries. Libraries need to act for the good of their larger ecosystems, whether this is the community, university, corporation, whatever. But if libraries do a good job for their ecosystems, they're instantly going to be valued, and they're going to be important, and they will rise up with the good they're doing for their host communities. Really great article. Please check it out. So how do we listen to people? There are tools. And we go through a number of these in the class. There are um, behavioral research tools, which look at people's behaviors and allow us to design services based on those behaviors. There are attitudinal research methods, which let us assess people's opinions. These are two different things. User experience relies a little bit more on behavioral um, research methods. Um, one thing, one method to talk about uh, is a journey map. And here's a nice concept. If you've never heard of the journey map, this is a great way to think about library touch points and the flow of someone using a library. So here we have a very typical journey map for someone seeing an item in a newsletter, placing a hold, and getting this, getting this item. Here are all the steps that people take. Some of them are physical buildings. Some of them are online. Um, here we have an example, say, in print, library newsletter first. 
all of these different things have to be aligned. They have to send the same good message of excellence. They have to make someone feel comfortable. They have to um, be friendly to provide a good user experience. This is a lot of work, no doubt. Um, but if we want to give people a good impression, if we want to be valuable to our communities, um, all these things need to be um, sending the same message and aligned. So if, um, that's a very, very, very brief um, little synopsis of user research and listening to people, but there's um, methods borrowed from anthropology like ethnographic inquiry, there's usability testing, there's, there's a lot of good stuff that we learned about in the class and that you can search for if you're interested. Um, and when we're designing and changing services and want to improve touch points, it's not necessarily a shot in the dark about what, what we should do to improve these things. Um, designing and design thinking is a, is a method. Uh, designing is not necessarily some genius in a corner just making pictures and uh, coming up with great ideas. Anyone can be a designer. Um, actually, we're all designers all the time, whether we think about ourselves that way or not, because design is just arranging something for a certain purpose, which we all do all the time. Anyway, um, if you want to learn a little bit more about design thinking, check out this um, PDF from Stanford's D School or Design School, Design Thinking for Educators. Um, it will clue you into this design process. All there's a bunch of different design methods. They all have five, five, basically around five components where you're understanding a problem, observing behavior around that problem, coming up with potential solutions by prototyping them, assessing what's good about these prototypes, what could be improved about these prototypes, and then eventually implementing um, something once you come up with a prototype that's, that's good. Um, so this is a method that everyone can, can do, and it's one that libraries should be following. Have you guys seen the new fire alarm made by the Nest thermostat people? It's called the Nest Protect. Watch the video for it. They are clearly a design-focused organization, and, and I don't mean they just make pretty-looking products. Their, their products are really based on human behavior, and when I watched the Nest Protect video for this fire or the smoke alarm, I really saw behavior that I've done many times um, demonstrated in this video. Like when I got a pan smoking really hot to sear a steak, right? The fire alarm goes off. What do I do? I take a newspaper and I fan the fire alarm, a smoke alarm, so it stops beeping. Um, they studied behavior based around the smoke detector, and they've created a solution to make safety not annoying. Um, pretty cool. So um, everything is designed. This is designed. Um, Designing can be iterative, it, and it doesn't take much to go from, say, this to this. These are just small improvements. This is just a graphic design improvement. Um, it's a change in attitude. Um, it doesn't take much, really, to go from a catalog record that is based on just exposing bibliographic or item data to one like this that is focused on user behavior and makes um, user, uh, user tasks easier to do. And um, random cool piece of news, I just had a conversation with a guy, a library web developer in Colorado, who's um, going to be taking this design that I did, um, just a mock-up for a library journal article, and he's going to actually be implementing something very close to this. Um, so that's pretty cool. At any rate, um, very easy to improve interaction design overall. Um, you know, going from this to, to this just takes reading a few graphic design books and making it a priority. What about larger issues and um, figuring out the purpose of libraries? Well, um, I have some ideas about that. I am really into this idea of libraries taking knowledge from the community and helping them publish it. Um, library U from Escondido Public Library is a good example of this. I'm beginning the research and envisioning of a product for a library in a music-focused city. They'll be taking stuff from their local music scene and making a website based around that. Really excited about it. Um, ultimately, I want libraries to help solve problems in their community. And this is a story of the Free Library of Philadelphia um, working with an advocacy, homeless advocacy group to um, give jobs to homeless people. Um, and they have a cafe in the library. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm probably way past my time, but I just thought I would share a few things that I'm up to um, design-wise and user experience-wise. 
we have a new service out called Prefab, and this is a pre-designed library website template. It's built on WordPress. You can check it out at helloprefab.com. It has a bunch of library um, features built in. Um, what I like about this so much isn't, isn't just the actual visual design of the website, but what I like is um, this idea of libraries recognizing that they're not all um, unique snowflakes and, um, and coming up with um, common solutions to problems that everyone, all libraries are facing. It's really nuts to me that libraries across the country are all working on the same problem with their library website and they're all doing a horrible job. Um, efforts like this should be centralized um, whether it's a website or maybe graphic design. Um, libraries of similar sizes and of similar um, backgrounds should be working together to help solve similar design problems. Another project that is just wrapping up, um, I did some research for the PLA through an IMLS funded grant um, about enhancing summer reading. So if, um, if you're at all interested in summer reading, check this out. We wrote a paper detailing what a the creation of a summer learning tool would look like, and there's a lot uh, based on gamification and coming up with summer reading programs that are quest and task based. And again, less about just consuming information and also about creating stuff. Um, here is an uh, interface that I just built. There is an index out of UCLA, the Hispanic American Periodicals Index. Um, they needed a refresh of their website, so um, we built them some searching stuff and some search results, and it's pretty great. It's not live yet, um, but I think this is one of the better advanced search screens around. I'm looking forward for it to go live. Here are the search results. Um, emphasis is on typography, legibility. It's also responsive design, so it'll work on tablets and phones as well. If you want a little bit more about user experience stuff, um, something else that we just launched is a user, library user experience newsletter. Um, so if you want some updates about this crazy stuff, um, sign up for our newsletter. It's pretty fun. We've had only one issue so far. So the second one's coming out soon. Lastly, um, I write about this stuff at walkingpaper.org, and um, you can check out more there. And uh, finally, I've probably gone way over, super sorry. Um, but uh, I'll leave us with this thought. I really do think that every position in the library affects the overall user experience. Um, and uh, we need to just make sure we're, we're moving towards making improvements in all these decisions. And um, yeah, that's all. So you can um, find me at these places. And I'll um, stop sharing my screen and uh, read all the chat messages.